to start this message today from the scripture we read this morning. Bearing in mind that what we are trying to get to here today is to ask ourselves, are we going to, are we aware that the Lord is coming back for us? Are we just living like all the people that live on earth, just doing their daily things? Or like the animals that just wake up, look for food, and eat and drink and sleep? If that is all that we are doing, then why are we better than the animals? Because let me just tell you the truth. Whether we work this degraded job in this world or we have the billions of dollars, at the end of it all, we all just need clothes, we need a nice place to sleep, and we need food. Praise the Lord. Every other thing is just an addition. You can peel all those things off as long as you have those three things. You're just fine. I'm not saying I'm looking for a house to go live in. Praise the Lord. Just trying to make a point. So the point here is that are we going to be ready when the Lord comes? We cannot neglect that aspect of our lives because we are in pursuit of these worldly, worldly things. Romans Matthew chapter 24, we read this morning from verse, six, from verse 9. We're going to read from verse 9. Verse 9 and verse, sorry, verse 29 and verse 30 that we're going to read right now. Matthew 24. Verse 29 and verse 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens will be shaken, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Many important things to look at in this verse, in this uh, scripture. The Bible says that whether we like it or not, the Lord will come back. Amen? Amen. Whether the world likes it or not, the, the Lord is coming back. The Lord is coming back. Today you won't believe it because a lot of people look, feel like that this Christianity thing is just religion. The people think, oh, it's just a way for people to kind of uh, structure their lives. But there is more to this than meets the eye. The Bible also says that the return of the Lord will not be until there is great trouble on earth. There is great trouble on earth. It will be so much so bad that people will even be looking for God somewhere. It will not, it will not return until there is serious problematic time on this earth. As people of God, we see a lot of things happening today. Some of us will say, oh, you know, maybe the Lord is about to come, but about to come, or oh, maybe he should just show up. But the Bible says that when he comes, praise the Lord, it will be an open event. He says, every tribe shall see him. I want you to think now, say the sky will be open, every tribe shall see the Lord. I want you to think now, when this was written about 2,000 years ago, we had nothing remotely like what we have today. No televisions, praise the Lord. There were no phones, praise the Lord. No films, praise the Lord. No movie houses. No nothing. Trash were living in their own little, little community. Some people don't even go more than 50 miles from where they live. But if you go something bad, they happen to you. And yet, the Lord said, every tribe on earth shall see the return of the Son of God. Today, we hear it. It's not even a big deal to us because everybody has a cell phone that is a, a television in their hand. Praise the Lord. So everybody, people can say, okay, if he's coming in, in uh, Venice Beach, somebody in Venice Beach will take the video and show it to the rest of the world. And the Bible said, mm -mm. 
Even if they, even if they tell you, oh, he's at Venice Beach, don't go there, praise the Lord. Because when he comes, the Bible says, every trap shack, it's as if he's coming just where you are. I'm saying this to say that he will return. Amen. Amen. The Bible says he will return with power and glory. Why is this important? One of the reasons why Christianity is as if people are, we are begging people to become Christians. I don't know why we beg people to be Christians. Because Christianity is a very, a very, um, how, how, how will you put it? The greatest kingdom that can ever be. How many of us have received a letter or a phone call from the Queen of England begging us to become part of the royal family? They don't want you to join, praise the Lord. They don't want you to join, they will check, uh, do you have royal blood? If you don't have royal blood, they want to know, why do you think you belong with us? But today we are begging people because our motives are not right. If we know the value of what we have in the Lord, people will be begging us to be part of the kingdom of God. But I give them a, 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 a you know, excuse that it's okay, maybe because they are, they, the way it was presented, people can't really see. Because the first time our Lord came, the Bible said he came like a lamb. Praise the Lord. What is a lamb? A lamb, when you are described like a lamb, it means like you're, you're like anybody can push you around. You can don't fight, you don't do anything, you know, you're not, when somebody's angry with you, you, you fall back. You're very gentle, you're meek. He was a lamb. And they looked at him, how can this be the king of kings? Every predator can attack and destroy. So with human eyes, we couldn't comprehend, we couldn't understand how this soft, gentle man could have all this power and all this authority. Even today, we still see him as the lamb. But the Bible said that he will come back as a mighty warrior. Amen? Amen. He will come back as the king of kings and the lord of lords. In other words, he will be greater than any king that has ever lived. In fact, if you put them all together, he's still greater than them. He will come with power and glory. The Bible said that when he comes, the world will see what is happening at his coming, and he said, they will mourn. The world, there will be a mourning that, can you imagine that? The first time he came, the Bible said what? He said, glory, peace on earth, because Father has sent a deliverer to earth. The second coming will be a time of mourning for the earth. Why? Because they rejected the hand of God when they had the opportunity to accept it. It's not just my word. But then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our Lord will come with power and great glory. And he's trying to make us realize what we have as people of God. This is why I tell you, don't ever sell yourself short. Don't ever think that you're nothing. Don't ever allow people to define you. Let the word of God define you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. 